Welcome to the Creativity Thinking and Education Podcast with your host, Patricia Rose Upsack. Today, we will continue our remarkable conversation with Mary Jo Bulbrick and as she talks to us about the amazing Virginia Satir. Please enjoy this second part of our conversation. Uh, yeah, see, I love that. That's, yeah. she's, she's amazing. That's who she was. Yeah. That's who she was. Yeah. She, and she did things that are so different when what the norm was. She would engage directly with the person to help them to feel okay. And uh, I do have the card for the five freedoms. And I, I want to mention it here because this will give you an overview of what needs to happen. And I want to mention that the title of the presentation that came to me for today was called, and I'm going to uh, describe it, Holiday Joy or Holiday Struggle, The Choice is Yours. And Helpful Hints, Blending the Teachings of Renowned Virginia Satir with Energy Therapy mm -hmm. for Helping Individuals and Families Change and Heal. Bottom line, that's what it's about. Right. So it's very practical. It's not just coming up with some um, esoteric theory that is so abstract and removed from people. It's a very intimate way of helping people to engage with what's going on in their life and make changes. And why I chose the topic holiday joy or holiday struggle, the choice is yours. Oh my God, that's what happens continually around holiday times. And I've witnessed this as a psychotherapist and family therapist. I've known for years the holiday times are very, very, very important and stressful things for many, many people because it's a time when families get together and the whole process of deciding are they going to get together, who's coming, what is unfinished, who's upset with who, or what are the demands and expectations one person has over another, or a fulfilled dream that didn't happen. This is the story, the story that impacts our holiday events. Well, see, I think, I think that that's one of the things that I really drew me to Virginia Satir's work is it felt like she really did, she listened to people's <laughs> stories. She, she um, and, but then she also would add to their stories in that she would explain to them oftentimes the good that she saw in them. She, she was very good at, at building people up exactly the way they needed to be built up. That's absolutely true. And as I go over this list of the five freedoms, yes. it will give you a clue of what the helpful hints are to make your holiday joyful or become a struggle. These are the clues that will help you to get to a new place. And then I'll give you some additional things. But these are her five freedoms. The first one is to see and hear what is here instead of what should be, was, or will be. Right. Duh. That's called being very present. Right. The next one is to say what one feels and thinks instead of what one should. Many, many, many of us have been growing up with shoulds. You should do this. You should do that. You shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that. So her position is to say what one feels and thinks instead of what one should. The third one is to feel what one feels instead of what we ought to feel. You know, children being raised, they would, a lot of times parents might say, now don't cry. Well, shoot, you want to cry. Right. If you want to cry, cry. And so she was a big proponent to feel what one feels instead of what one ought. The next one is to ask what one wants instead of always waiting for permission. Oh, my God, that's a huge one. 
And one of the things, uh, this is kind of a personal story on me, but it exemplifies the point I want to make. Um, I love giving gifts and I enjoy finding just the right thing for the person based upon either what they've said they're interested in or what I know about their life. So around the holiday time, it's a great time for me to tune in to family and friends. And I start thinking about now what would be something that I, I witness and e the person either asked me for it directly or uh, for myself, I began to see, you know, do people take the time to really notice who a person is? And what I realized that a lot of times I'd be disappointed that I wouldn't get something I wanted. And I go, duh, it's because one, I'm always taking care of everybody else's needs and they don't think I need anything. <laughs> I go, that's the difference. And then the last freedom is to take risk in one's own behalf instead of choosing to be only secure and not rock rocking the boat. Well, this is a huge one. A lot of people, you know, if, they're, if they work with someone who's a boss, that is bossy, or they're in a relationship um, that is very demanding and they don't assert what their needs are, then um, um, some people just give up and say, well, I'm not going to take the risk and, and do what I want to do or go where I want to go or say what I want to say. So that's essentially what uh, she's showing people to do, how to engage with their inner self and to look at their life, look at their family dynamics, and to see uh, what needs to be done to change. And her whole thing is about helping individuals and families change and heal, bottom line. Right. That's what she did and what she was interested in. So you, so you helped her start, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> you helped her start a program in Utah? Is that what you said? That's correct. Uh, Virginia and I, as I mentioned to you, she had a group called The Beautiful People where people said, hey, I want to hang out with you some more. So once a year, we would get together and uh, I'd say maybe close to uh, 80, 90, 100 people would come together at really a nice place generally and we'd just hang out together. And it was at the time where she started to say, I think I need to train other people to do what I do. She was probably in her um, 60s at the time. And uh, so she was getting older and really was pretty solo in what she did. And uh, uh, she talked about she wanted to create a training program. So we would meet together. We had met together, I think it was five years when I started hanging out with her. And I said, Virginia, we've got to do something instead of talking about doing something. And I said, if you like, I'll help you to launch your training program. And at the time, I was director of psychosocial nursing at the University of Utah, so I had access to university resources, and uh, um, I got permission from her to launch her first international teaching network experience uh, connected to uh, uh, creating her legacy to live on, and it was offered in Park City, Utah. And what we did is uh, we did three weeks training of people who wanted to learn her method. We had one week annual meeting and we had three weeks of what's called process community. Actually, she had been doing month long training for people in her work, but we built it as a three week training. So uh, in addition to that, I organized 19 workshops throughout Utah at different agencies where in the new model she was training, we would go in different places in around surrounding Salt Lake City and offer the training model. And, uh, and also some people got university credit for coursework. So that was the launching of her 
network that was called uh, Avanta Network. So, so I, I mean, I, I'm asking this because I actually have no idea, but um, do they still teach Virginia Satir's work? Yes, they do. Um, and Avanta Network, they, begin, they changed the name, and it is now called the Virginia Satir Global Network. And that is the organization that continues Virginia's legacy. You can uh, find it online. And I'm a member of that group and that organization. And like I said, when I first started this presentation, that this year, which was celebrating 100 years of her life, because she was born in 1916, and um, it is now 2016, so that's 100 years, they did an international training. And this is curious because it sets the stage of, of where I am and how I'm involved in this now. In May of this year, I received an email from Mary Leslie, and she was presenting at that international conference. And what she wanted to do was talk about Virginia in her spiritual orientation and her interest in in energy therapies because Virginia is known primarily as a mental health professional and uh, an educator and working with education all different levels. She wasn't uh, known as an energy therapist. And actually how she and I got together is because of our personal mutual interests in energy therapies. Uh-huh. At, one of, at one of our meetings of uh, the beautiful people, as I was telling you about, um, she had um, intuitive there to do her thing. And uh, people would come up to her, and this is the first time she had done something like this. It was like a continuing education that somebody who was present was doing an intuitive piece. And people were saying, oh, my goodness, what is Virginia doing? So, but she and I would talk about it. In fact, I was doing a book called Becoming a Therapist, and it asked her to write a chapter in that book. This was in, I think, 1980. And um, uh, it's, it's when I first met her, and she agreed to do it. I was with her at a conference where she was doing a workshop, and I still can remember as if it was happening yesterday. I looked over at her. She was sitting at the table next to me. And I said, Virginia, I'm writing a book. I'm becoming a therapist. Would you like to be in it? She said, tell me more about it. And I told her about it. And she said, yes, I would. Well, about six months passed and I hadn't heard from her. So I called her secretary. And her secretary said, oh, Mary Jo, Virginia can't do everything everybody asks her to do. I don't, I'm afraid to disappoint you, but I don't think she's going to do it. And I said, I know she's going to do it. I know she is going to do it. So she reminded me again, well, Virginia isn't able to do everything, blah, blah, blah. I said, well, I'm going to be in San Francisco. And uh, how about at a at a workshop on therapeutic touch. I think it was the East West Academy of Healing Arts. How about if I come over and interview Virginia while I'm there? She said, are you interested in energy things? I said, yes, I am. She said, well, so is Virginia. I know Virginia will want to talk to you about it. And that is how she and I connected at an intimate level And it was after that, then she started inviting me to come to her group. And uh, so our interface has always been through energy therapies. Now, getting back to May of this year. So Mary Leslie wrote me and she said, Mary Jo, I've been trying to get some background on Virginia's interests in energy therapies and in spirituality. And three people told me to contact you. You would know what Virginia's ideas were about this. So she said, that's why I'm contacting you. So I looked on the website to see what they were doing in Vancouver 
And I, I immediately got a hit. I need to go to that conference. And I had not been active in the satir community where in the 70s and 80s, I was the kid on the block who did everything with Virginia and mm-hmm. was right. kind of a key henchman for what she did. But like I said, I moved into the world of energy therapies. So, but when I saw they were celebrating her birthday, I go, I have to go. And so 1.30 in the morning, after I got that email, and I looked online, I booked a ticket. The next morning, Mary Leslie had written me, and she said, Mary, and I had sent her some material, what I did with Virginia Satir, and I had it on my website, because I had done a number of trainings, actually including a video series in Perth, Western Australia, called helping individuals and families change. Uh, so does, does, that, does that video series still exist? It does. It does. So tell us the name of that again. Helping individuals and families change. And there are three parts to it. It's called Becoming You, Shaping You, and Becoming Well. And how that series came about is I was working on uh, – uh, I, I had a visiting professorship position in Perth, Western Australia, and um, uh, helped coordinated a, a graduate program that they were starting in that country. And um, I was doing my own theory development, combining uh, energy work and psychotherapy. And I was working with the um, uh, media department to do some filming. And after I described what I wanted to do, the, the um, director of that department said to me, he said, we had a woman here, maybe when I first came here, it could have been 10 years earlier. And she taught here in Western Australia. And I was the one who did the videotaping connected to her materials. And I was just dumbfounded how good and exciting it was. And it sounds very similar to what you're talking about. I said, well, who is the name of the person? He said, Virginia Satir. And I said, I'm part of her teaching network. (laughs) And so when I created my original film series, and it was at the end of the year, and, uh, uh, and we did filming before live audiences there, And I came back to the United States and he was editing the films and sending me the material. And I didn't know it, but he put the original video material he had of Virginia and interspersed it in my films. Oh, that's wonderful. It is wonderful. But now I want to get back to the story about June of this year with Mary Leslie. Okay. All right. So Mary... Mary then, um, when she received the materials that I had sent her, she said, Mary Jo, this is fabulous. I really think you ought to come to this conference. And if you come, you can co-present with me. So I wrote her back. I said, Mary, I booked a ticket last (laughs) night. I would love to come and co-present with you. And that's what I did. Oh, I think that's wonderful. And when I was there... Uh, One of the key people whose name is John Bandman, who continues Virginia's work and legacy. He's um, uh, from Vancouver, and uh, the group that was sponsoring that conference were, uh, he's very active with that group. And he said to me... What was the name of the conference? uh, It's uh, becoming more, um, let's see, the official name... It, it was becoming more fully human. I think they used the original name that Virginia had. Okay. That's when she launched the training in, uh, with me in Park City, Utah. That's what her goal was, to create a university for becoming more fully human and teach people how to live within their families in a new way, how to help professionals, how to help people live in their families a new way. So anyway, um, that's what we did. We, we, uh, I went up there, and John said to me, Mary Jo, what do you think we need to do next with Virginia's work? I said, I don't know yet, but I do know I am supposed to do something. So when I came home, I started meditating, and Virginia came to me as 
all the examples I've given you that have shown you how my life was woven around experiences with her. And this is only just a small fraction of the many, many inner things that interface between our lives together. But so when I came home, I go, all right, I'm ready. I am going to create a university for becoming more fully human, what she wanted to do, and a training model blending Virginia Satir growth model in energy therapy. And oh, that's what I, I did. I love that. That's wonderful. That's what I did. And it's available now. I just came back from Peru in October and I helped launch some of the new training there that I had worked with. And uh, I've presented at ISEAM and uh, working on a, a paper for the Satir uh, journal that they have. And I'm totally committed to now bring forward her ideas and show how it interfaces with what is out there. We still need to do more feel, more things around helping families heal. We need to educate professionals, both school teachers of every kind, how to uh, help uh, the learning process and to uh, build their self-esteem, help have clear communication and bring peace. Yes. <laughs> well, what's fascinating to me is I, you know, I would love, well, I'd, like I, I had told you when we started this, that, I mean, there's so much that you and I have to talk about. And what I would really like to see us do is sometime in the spring, um, have another hour with you and see where you've progressed with the university. Because, cause, you know, being a Taurus, like you are, the two of us together, you know, yeah. you're April Tauruses, that's us. Um, I really, the, the first thing, I, I could see images and I wanted to know, okay, how is it set up? What's the foundation of it? How do you have it put together? You know, all of those kinds of things. And, of course, we don't have time for you to do that today, but I really would love to have you come back possibly in April and do another hour, which will be turned into two podcasts. And we'll, we'll actually see how far you've, you've um, come for that university, because I think that that would be a wonderful dream come true. I mean, it, you know, Virginia Satir is one of those, like I said, she was my mentor that I never met. I mean, it was I would read everything I could get my hands on about her. And and people would say, well, you, you can't do that. And yet the basics of what I taught as a teacher, and I, w I would started a program in Boulder, Colorado with um, learning disabled high school kids who were very bright, who only came to see me um, once, a, once a day. And yet using her work as a foundation because that was what felt right to me and it was like it felt so natural to be able to kind of just go with the flow and each kid and their families got different kinds of um work because it wasn't it, you couldn't be a cookie cutter teacher or a cookie cut cutter person with these people they had real needs and real um, dreams and you found out what those goals and dreams for their kid was and for their families and you helped them and my students most of them have been very very successful and they're healthy and happy and you know contributing to the world and I have to say that I think that one of the main reasons for that is because I found Virginia Satir's work on self-esteem it was just profound for me I totally agree with you, and that's absolutely accurate. She transcended the paradigm of her day, and she linked people together in such an intimate way, spiritually, that it met the personal needs and goals of everyone present. And it's curious to me that after all of these years, the prediction that I had, when I look at how my life has evolved over, and I'm in my 70s now, and I look back at, I was for half of Virginia's age when we were active together. And, you know, I, one time she put her arm around me and she had given me a, a beautiful silk blouse of hers. And we were looking in the mirror together and she said, you could be my daughter. 
And I go, I know I could because I have very similar coloring to what she has. And I'm also about the same height that she is. So there are many, many things that our lives were woven together. And it's not only true between Virginia and I, but I really feel that our experience together uh, was a continuation and meant to help facilitate things for you and for me as well right. that shows the common linkage. And this is how the world works. This is the new paradigm that goes beyond conscious planning. And I'll never forget, I was sitting outside the hotel getting ready <laughs> to go to the train station. You came out with Jackie and I saw the two of you pacing and you saw I was reading some kind of a, a tour guide book for area and you said to me where did you get that and I said inside and you went inside and came out and then we found out we were going to the same place and the rest is history from there but I look back on it now and I go that was meant to be oh I think absolutely it was meant to be I mean it was um, I mean the conference we went to was wonderful but I knew that the person that I met that I would continue my relationship with was you, you know, from the conference. It was, you know, it was really, um, because you have to understand lots of people when I, when I say something about Virginia Satir and that really disturbed me, didn't know anything about her and you did. And that made me very happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, the same for me. And what I realized I had missed talking about her uh, and the foundation of my life has totally, totally been based on that. Even my youngest child, she was godmother to my youngest child, uh, oh, Jim, wow. in Salt Lake City. And all of the experiences she and I had together over the years, everything I do is woven around the philosophy. And I am so happy to share it to articulate it, and not so much because Virginia needs to be praised because she's very happy where she is. That's oh, not the sure. problem. Right. But yeah. it's for a different way of being in the world. We need new models. Yes, and I want to tell you one thing that happened that is that just happened this week that is related to it. And uh, I was working with a young man from Africa who called me who uh, had a near-death experience. And I could tell he was really very distressed and that life wasn't worth living. And we had worked online before and I had met him through a mutual friend. And so I, I knew he was borderline, not that I thought he would kill himself, but I thought he was greatly in danger. So I spent time talking to him and I said, Joseph, I want you to do a drawing for me. I want you to do a drawing for me on what is your dream? What would you like to do with your life that you're not doing? You do the drawing, then send it to me, and we'll talk back. So in about an hour, he sent me his drawing. And the first thing, as he started talking about it, I said, you're feeling different, aren't you? And he laughed, which he hadn't been laughing. And he said, yes, I am. I said, it looks like you're on the other side of the really difficult place you had been in. He said, yes, I am now feeling hopeful. And then what uh, we talked about in a mutual friend who introduces, I just got off the phone with her a little while ago and I talked about him and she said, yes, I also felt there was an issue. But you know what? In the picture I he drew, he wanted to open up a children's orphanage and teach them in the new spiritual ideas and raising them on the values that we're talking about. How about that? Oh, and my wonderful. friend said, we're going to work together to do this. So, you know, when you ask me in April what has done, <laughs> I will tell you that as of this past week and today, we're working with a young man in Africa on the Ivory Coast and helping him to start an orphanage and switch his direction into this. And this came about because the authentic way of connecting with people that Virginia Satir taught me. Well, that's, you know, we ha I love you, but we have to stop. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, Thanks, so you. what we'll be doing is um, we will we will try to do this again in in April because I think it would be wonderful to have a continuation because you're just amazing. Um, so thank you very much, Mary Jo. Thank you. It's been a delight thinking about this, preparing for it, and sharing it. It's brought me a joyful memory for this holiday time, and that's what I. And uh, I've been having some hard times this holiday, and so just switching about something I love, which is the teachings of Virginia, has made my day. And oh, I I'm hope so glad. you do the oh, same. You know what I need you to do? Give them your website again, please. Okay, www.energymedicinepartnerships.com. Right. And on there, you'll be able to find some of the teachings of Virginia. I'll put up a, a small blurb that uh, they can find out more about her and some of the resources to oh, check out. That would be wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us here at the Creativity, Thinking, and Education podcast. And please visit us at happyteachershappystudents.com. If you find value in this podcast and the message that we are trying to spread, then click, click the subscribe button and give my show a review. I am so excited to be able to share the timeless awareness of so many really interesting guests. Thank you.